Mavis, so glad you're here. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm happy to be here, and I am just honored to be, to be uh, bestowed with this beautiful... Oh. oh boy, I am, I am. Thank you. But you know, this time... Oh, my. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> thank you so much. This... Okay, you hold it for me. <laughs> Don't go too far now. But... Uh, you know, this, this time, this is really, I, 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 this is really true to word, lifetime achievement. It has been 70 years that I've been, this is my lifetime. Yes, it's almost 70 years, almost. Well, but, you, um, you must be feeling the love. There's so many things happening. There's a, a whole record of songs written by other songwriters for you. There's another record of people, a, a tribute concert with all kinds of people out there, you know, yes, singing yes. Bonnie Raitt, Keb Mo, Joan Osborne, Emmylou Harris, Michael McDonald, Taj Mahal. Good. Everybody was. I feel good. Yeah, you should. I feel good. Yeah. <laughs> you got the movie on HBO. You've got the whole thing with the, oh, at the yes. Kennedy Center Honors. I mean, we love you. I Everybody loves more. you. <laughs> I love you more. It just won't stop. You know, I just. I, I'm just so grateful. I'm just so blessed. And I give God and I give pops, I give them all the glory. Yeah. You know, because um, yeah, indeed, yes, pops started it all. And you know, I had to stay on here as long as I could. And I intend to, as long as I can, to keep his legacy alive. Yeah. Keep him. And then with God's will, and I got people like, you know, you my big brother, my baby brother. And, and uh, we've been knowing each other a long time. Yeah. And I get to spend some time with your dad, Pops, too. Yes, Which was did. a beautiful thing for me. Yes, yes. No, yes. I, I was listening to a, a recording of one of those old shows that we did in the 90s with your dad. And Pops was uh, so cool. He was like the coolest guy in the world. Yeah. <laughs> and he was also so clear. Uh -huh. He said, I'm going to sing songs about love because love is the most powerful thing I've ever met in That's my right. life. That's right. That's and that's pop. what he did, you know. That's right. That's right. That's what he did. But then he had that, then he had that great way to sing and, and play guitar. But I want to ask you, Mavis, when you started, because you were only 12 years old when you first the Stable Singers really got together, right? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I was eight years old when we eight started, years old. but I was 12 when we first recorded. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was Uncloudy Day. Was that, that the was first? That was Uncloudy Day. Yeah. Uncloudy day. And, 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 and when people heard you on that record, I bet they didn't <laughs> think that was a 12-year-old girl singing on no, that record. they didn't. I was a little skinny, knock-kneed girl. And the people would say, oh, that's, that's what they'd announce on the radio. This is little Mavis Staples, this little girl singing this part on Uncloudy Day. They would say, that, that's, that's, that's not a little girl. That's got to be a man or a big fat lady. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's... My voice was so heavy, I would get in fights all the time. I'd yeah. fight. You yeah. know, the, the girls would come, you sound like a boy. I yeah. said, okay. Come <laughs> on. I said, but uh, I'm grateful for my voice. My oh, man. What a yes. voice. <laughs> yeah. You sang. Thank you. You sang, you, sang, uh, you sang low, and you had that little bit of that rough character to it, but I know that you couldn't really go out on the road with the Staple Singers until you graduated from high school. Right. And you went to the Paul Robeson High School. Did, no, did, no, no. I, I went to Parker. Oh, Parker. Pa Francis Parker. Francis Parker. Okay, mm -hmm. I got that wrong. But yeah. Francis Parker. So you went to Francis Parker High School, and you had to wait till you graduated before you could start traveling. That's right. That's right. Well, we, we, we would travel, but we would go on, on a weeknight because we sing on Sundays. Pops would go up to school and tell them, teachers, give Mavis some homework because she won't be back Monday. See, because we'd be driving. We'd do two, one at 3 o'clock, one at 8 o'clock, and then we'd start driving back to Chicago. And these were places like New Orleans, Georgia, Atlanta, everywhere. Always churches. Uh, well, churches and, and school auditoriums. Yeah. Uh, um, and and uh, I, was, I was loving that because I loved to, to uh, call down for breakfast. And we stay in the hotel, and I, but I get mad sometimes because I call down and I, I order my breakfast, and then the lady would say, uh, "Yes, Mr. Staples. Yes, Mr. Staples. I get you. 
<laughs> and I would say, I'm a lady, you know. <laughs> but uh, it was all right. I, I enjoyed it. And when you started getting more popular and having songs that were playing on the radio, was there a time when the churches were a little nervous about having you, when, you know, they didn't want you to come back because you were, you were singing what they thought were secular songs? You know, yeah, they, um, they wanted to put us out of church after I'll Take You There. But you see, I'll Take You There was the, was the first song that we had a rhythm section behind. For the most, we had been singing with just Pops' guitar. And when that rhythm section started, that bass came in. And people would hit the floor, you know? Everybody would hit the floor. And so the, the, the ladies, it, the staple singers are singing the devil's music. We don't want them in there singing. The, and so I did so many interviews. I tell these people, the devil ain't got no music. You know, he ain't got no music. Now. <laughs> Not only that, but the, uh, but the words to I'll Take You There. I mean, that's a, that belongs in church for sure. For sure. They weren't listening to the word. They, I said, you have to listen to what we're saying. We're telling you, I know a place. Ain't nobody crying. Ain't nobody worried. Ain't no smiling faces lying to the races. Where else could I be taking you but to heaven? You know? <laughs> So they finally backed off and they, they invited us back to church. The first, very first request, yeah. right in the pulpit, I'll take you there. Yeah, yes. yeah. yeah. I bet. I'm not surprised. Sure well. And of course, I don't want to gloss over uh, the, the time where, and it's a beautiful story about how, how Pops was hearing uh, Reverend Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. Dr. King, on the radio and found that you guys were in the same town somewhere along the line and he was gonna be at a church and he brought you down there, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, he did. Pops, we happened to be in Montgomery, Alabama on a Sunday morning. We didn't have to sing until that night. So Pops called my sisters and I to his room. He said, listen, y'all, this man Martin is here. We didn't know what Martin he was talking about, you know, because he had been listening to Dr. King on the radio. And uh, he said, he has a church here, and I'd like to go to his 11 o'clock service. Do you all want to go? We said, yeah, Pops, we want to go. We all got in the car. We drove down to, to Dexter Avenue Baptist Church. We were ushered in and seated, and someone let Dr. King know that we were in the service. And he acknowledged us. He said, we're glad to have Pops Staples and his daughters here this morning. We hope you enjoy the service. <laughs> and uh, we enjoyed the service, all right. Well, he stands at the back door, I mean, the service is over, to shake the worshiper's hands as we file out. Well, Pops go first, he shook his hand, and he stood there. Yvonne and Cledia and I, we went, we shook his hand, we kept going. But Pops, when he shook his hand, he stood there and talked to him for a while. He finally came on back to the hotel. He called us to his room again. He thought about it. He said, listen, y'all, I really like this man's message. I like his message. And I think that he can preach it. If he can preach it, we can sing it. And we began writing freedom song, right. message song, and we joined the movement, and we marched with Dr. King. I mean, we marched. For years and years, <laughs> yeah. yes, we did. Yeah. I mentioned uh, I mentioned earlier when I was talking about Ani and you that Pete Seeger was sort of part of that world, and his songs probably led you. You know, maybe it was Pete, maybe it was somebody else, but pretty soon you're up at the Newport Folk Festival. Yes. You're, you're starting to be part of that scene. Right. Right. We oh we would we would sing Dylan. We sing Pete and all of the, the folks. Well, you know, they started calling us to folk festivals from Newport. We didn't know about folk music, but when we heard it, we loved it. Was that around the time where Bob Dylan asked you to marry him? <laughs> yeah, Dylan, Dylan, it was just about that time in the 60s. In the 60s, he proposed, and uh, I, I said, no, Bobby. <laughs> we're too young. Oh, Mavis, we're not too young. I said, yes, we are too young, too. You know, I said, I don't even know how to cook. And he, <laughs> he, 
But uh, this last time, you know, I did a tour with him last year. For six weeks, I was on his tour. Wow. And I proposed to him. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I did. I told him, I said, let's get married now. <laughs> and uh, I was scared he was going to tell me to get in line, you know, because he had a whole row of ladies waiting there. <laughs> But uh, we had fun. We had fun. Yeah. Well, it's, it's been just an amazing, amazing thing to just sort of watch and learn and listen to the sounds and the stories. And there's so many more. We don't have time to do the whole yes. thing, of course. But I want to ask you a couple things. One is you've met everybody. I have. And you've worked with just about everybody, <laughs> whether, you know, Elvis and Presidents yes. and Dr. King and worked with Prince. Mm -hmm. um, along the way... Uh, was there anyone that, that intimidated you or actually made you feel like you were, you were kind of nervous to be around them? You know, everybody was so beautiful. I, I, hadn't, I hadn't, to this day, I haven't met any entertainer that uh, was not welcome, arms welcome, you, you know, and you, so th that, that erases all. You, I do, I, I can be nervous before I get to meet them. You know, I get just like, when I leave here, next week I'm going to be with the Kennedys. And I'm a nervous wreck. I don't know what to say to them, you know. But, but uh, any of the entertainers, I, I, I got to meet everybody, uh, Diana Washington, Ella Fitzgerald, everyone was so beautiful. You know, the entertainment uh, 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 field, the people in the entertainment world are beautiful people. Mm -hmm. We sing about love. And see that guy out there keep telling me how much he loved me? <laughs> and and, and we're, we're flower children. We're, we're, we're love, you know. Yeah. We, so I, saw, I saw the clothes you were wearing in the 60s. Yeah, you're flower children, all yes, right, for yes. sure. <laughs> yes, we're flower children, so. But we, uh, we are also in, an, in a new time right now where there's parts of our country are kind of divided. And yes. in some ways, you're, does it feel like, I mean, I don't know what it feels like, but it seems to me that your message, your songs are as relevant, as needed, as necessary That's now, true. if not more so than That's ever. That's true, they are. And, and it, 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 I, 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 I kind of hate to say they, they still are. I wish they weren't, you know, because if they weren't, we'd be in a better world, you know. <laughs> But, but they are, they're just as relevant as they were in the 60s. And you know, I can turn on the news sometime and I, I feel like I'm living back in the 60s. You know, it's, 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 we got to get, get, wait till my next record come. When you hear my next record, I got it coming. Yeah. I got it coming, yes, yes, I'm ready. Well, listen, with Ani DeFranco's uh, comments about feminism and patriarchy and with these two strong women, I will just say that it's, it's again a treat, a delight, an honor to be with you, Mavis. We're inspired yeah. by your singing and by your actions. Thank you so Thank much. you so much for being here. Thank you for having Let's me. Let's get back to music. Welcome back the one and only Mavis Staples. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. Love you, Mavis. I love you, sweetheart. Thank you. I just my baby brother, y'all. All right. Hi, this is Nick Forster from E-Town. If you want to stay up to date with all the performances, interviews, and behind-the-scenes footage, click the subscribe button. Thanks. <laughs>